So binding during uh, cooking, heat coagulates the egg's pro protein, which then acts as an adhesive binding the other ingredients to the surfaces of the cooked material. Okay, next we have foaming. So the cap capacity of egg whites to be beaten into a foam that increases uh, to six or eight times its original volume is in invaluable in food preparation. Egg white foams are used to aerate and live in a number of food products such as puffy omelets, soffles, angel food cake, sponge cake, and meringues. Our lesson four, which is vegetables and fruits. So at the end of this chapter, the students must be able to first dif differentiate fruit from vegetables. Second, identify fruits using the botanical definition. Third, identify vegetables. Okay, so Webster's dic Dictionary refers to vegetables as any plant whose parts are used as food. So in practice, a vegetable in uh, is the edible part of a plant, whether it is raw or cooked. So accompanying the main course of a meal, imagine a meal consisting of just meat or dairy products and a starch. It is the vegetables and fruits that impart color and sometimes unique flavors and textures to meals. Okay? As what you can see here, this is the classification of vegetables. Okay. So the classification of vegetables, a part of the plant from which vegetables originate, is one of the uh, methods to classify vegetables. For example, as what we can see in the figure, it shows that vegetables may be derived from almost any part of a plant. So first we have roots. Examples of roots are carrots, beets, turnips, and radishes. Second, we have bulbs. Examples of bulbs are onions, leek, spring onions, and garlic. Okay. Next, we have stems. Example of stems are celery, bamboo shoots, and asparagus. Okay. Next, we have leaves. So, examples of leaves are spinach and lettuce. Okay. Next, we have seeds. Examples of seeds are beans, corn, and peas, and even uh, we also have flowers. So, examples of flowers are broccoli and cauliflower. So, there are also some fruits that are routinely called vegetables and are routinely used as vegetables. Okay, so the plant's pigments. So, vegetables and fruits have many colors such as green leafy vegetables, apples such as green and red apples, tangerine such as orange, and Obergreen or, or aubergine, which is purple. So these are just a few of the examples. So plant pigments fall into the major groups. Uh, we have here the carotenoids, the chlorophyll, and the flavonoids. So carotenoids and chlorophylls are found in pl plastids and are fat-soluble, while flavonoids pigments are water-soluble and have a tendency to be lost in the in cooking water okay as what you can see here in our uh, diagram so this is the three pigments of plants first we have carotenoids with uh, and one example of carotenoids is a carrot so another is oranges peaches pineapples pink grapefruit, red and yellow peppers, tomatoes, watermelon, winter squashes. So it includes the carotene or the yellow orange, the lycopene or the red orange, and the centophyll or the yellow color. Okay, next we have the chlorophyll. In chlorophyll, we have two uh, types of chlorophyll. We have chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. When we say chlorophyll A, it is blue-green, while chlorophyll B is green. So one example of uh, chlorophyll uh, pigment is a broccoli, okay, green cabbage, kale, lettuce, spinach. Okay, next we have the flavonoids or the anthocyanin. So uh, more of a color red, purple. We have also eggplant, the radish, the red cabbage, the red potato. While another uh, type of flavonoids is anthocyanin. So it is more of a cream or white color we have cauliflower onions rice turnips white potato while another 
uh, type of flavonoids is a bet beta betalanes. So betalanes is a purple, red, or yellow color. So one example is beets. Okay, next we have, so as what we have discussed, some fruits are used and identified as vegetables. So in terms of botany, fruits are part of the plant that contains its seeds. Therefore, if it uh, derives from a flower, then it is a fruit. Example of fruit that are used as vegetables or that many people classify as vegetables are first we have tomatoes, cucumbers, avocados, okra, eggplant, olives, water chestnuts, and peppers. So confusion of the opposite sort is steered up by a rhubarb, which is a really a vegetable but is usually treated as a fruit. Okay? Next is the, the key distinction flavor. So according to Harold McGee, culinary fruits are distinguished from vegetables by one important characteristic. So they are among the few things we eat that we are meant to eat. So the very words fruit and vegetable reflect this differences. So vegetables come from a Latin uh, verb vegere, meaning to invigorate or enlighten. While fruit, on the other hand, comes from the Latin uh, fructus, whose cluster of related meanings includes gratification, uh, pleasure, satisfaction, and enjoyment. So it is the nature of fruit to taste good, to appeal to our basic biological interest, while vegetables stimulate us to find and create more subtle and diverse pleasures than fruits have to offer. Okay, so next we have the classification of fruits. So fruits are ripened ovaries and adjacent parts of a plant's flower. So they are classi classified according to the type of flower from which they develop. So simple, we have simple, we have aggregate or multiple. So these are the classification of fruits. First, we have simple fruits. Uh, develop from one flower and include droops, uh, also oranges, grapefruits, lemons. So these are simple flowers. It only develops from one flower. Next, the aggregate fruits, they develop from several ovaries in one flower. So they include blackberries, raspberries, strawberries. Okay, next we have the multiple fruits. So th they develop uh, from cluster of several flowers. So for example, we have pineapples, okay, figs. So those are uh, the classification of fruits. Next, as a student learning kitchen and basic food preparation, you must uh, familiarize yourself to the most common fruits and vegetables available in the local market. So in this list, we have used the but botanical definition of fruit to classify so I don't need to uh, tackle each or discuss each of this uh, list of local fruits and vegetables but I would like to request if uh, you can fam be familiarized with this uh, vegetables and fruits okay next we have lesson five the soups and stocks so at the end of this chapter, the students must be able to first differentiate, differentiate a broth from a soup. Second, define a broth and a soup. And identify and differentiate kinds of broth and soup. Okay. So, soup is often the first impression of a meal. So, soup is an introductory item, often serve as an indicator of what uh, if to follow. Okay. Although they are usually served as an introductory item, they may also be served after a meal because of their versatility. So, we have here, soups are liquid, so food that contains little solid ingredients. Stews differ from soups in a way that more solid than liquid is present in their ingredients. Stews can be considered a complete meal in themselves. Soups came from the word sop which means soaked bread in thick stew. The English word used for the evening meal, supper, is derived from soup. So pots were often used to prepare soups, which is why the word potage is often associated with soups. Okay, types of soups. So there are many assortment of soups. Most soups are served hot, but 
they are exception there are exceptions so the most famous one is a vegezwa so whatever the temperature all soups are based on stock or broth so the stock or broth serve as the foundation of soups wherein other ingredients are added lending each kind of soups its own name and unique characteristics so stocks are primarily water with little or no flavor at all then building on this base thin or thickened soup can be made followed by uh, uh, almost unlimited variations such as cold noodle fruit and dessert soups so the two basic categories of soups we have the clear or thin and thickened plus cream as an example of a thickened soup so we have here uh, the types of clear and thin soups so it includes bouillons and consommes so thin soups are somewhat thicker than clear soups so we have here this is a bouillon so it is a french word from broth Bouillons are less gelatinous than stocks and may be added to poultry and vegetable stocks to add flavor. Traditionally, this type of soup is called bouillon if it, based, if it is based on beef and court bouillon on fumet if it is prepared using fish. And court is the French word for short and it describes the preparation time of bouillon which is much shorter than that of stocks okay next we have here the consomme so a consomme is a perfect clear beef bouillon one raw egg white is added for every quarter of stock and then the whole mixture is heated to boiling the egg white will co coagulate on the surface of the stock forming what is referred to as a raft so because bouillon is a French word for broth and because it is so similar to consomme, the three terms are often used interchangeably. Okay, next we have the thin soups. So thin soups have uh, consist consistency between a clear liquid soup and a thickened soup. These soups are broth based but typically uh, contain a garnish of cooked meats vegetables or starch such as pasta rice or barley so thickened soups any stock or broth can be thickened with cream puree pu pureed vegetables a sauce or other thickeners such as added bread noodles grains or plain starch so adding starches to soups also reduces the perception of saltiness if the composite if the components of starch or any added g gums bind the sodium. Okay, so examples of thickened soups. There are many varieties of thick soups. Thick soups also include any that are pureed or made from starchy vegetables that have been pulverized and sieved. Potatoes are common thickener for a range of thickened soups. So first we have here the chowders. Chowders are usually fish-based soups thickened with vegetable pieces such as potatoes that have been coated in milk. Next, we have the gazpacho. It is an uncooked thick tomato-based soup with added vegetables and Latin America seasonings that is served chilled. Okay, remember it is served chilled. Next, we have the minestrone. So minestrone, it is an Italian soup that contains macaroni vegetables and beans uh, so it is served uh, commonly in italy a minestrone soup next we have the egg drop soup so it is very popular to chinese soup it is made by dropping a slightly beaten egg into simmering clear stock okay so Cream soups. Cream soups are a type of thickened soup. These cream soups are bisque, are made by adding cream and or milk to thickened, flavorful puree made from meats, poultry, fish, and or vegetables. An excellent cream soup must have a consistency, lecture, and flavor. So this is an example of a cream soup and a bisque. Okay, so stocks, white stocks, 
uh, are flavored liquid obtained by simmering the bones of beef, veal, chicken, or pork. So meat parts preferred are the neck and knuckle bones uh, because they have more collagen that converts into gelatin and extracts are more flavorful. So the two most commonly used meats are the beef and chicken. So veal bones give the thickest stocks because they have most uh, the most amount of collagen, while beef bones have the meatiest flavor. Okay, next we have the brown stock. So it has deeper and caramelized flavor. Bones and meat undergo browning before water is added. So browning uh, the bones and meat before adding water has the advantage of discouraging the stock from becoming cloudy. Okay. So, regardless of whether, whether the stock is brown or white, it is important to simmer rather than to boil the stock. So, boiling would cause the particles floating to the top to turn back into the broth, turning it cloudy and less clean tasting. Okay. Next, we have here meat stocks so meat stock based on cracked bones and sometimes raw meat serves as the major ingredient for all meat soups and major meat sauces so some of the cuts most frequently used for meat stock include first we have beef so uh, whether it is oxtail chalk shank bottom round and short ribs N next we have pork whether it is hawks hump bones or boston butt next lamb it should be shank, leg, or shoulder. Okay, next we have the poultry stocks. So the more mature the poultry used to, uh, to make stock, the more flavorful will be the liquid. So birds that have been uh, free to roam and scavenge are called free-range birds. Yield the most flavor of all. Fish stocks. Most fish stocks are used uh, with the backbones. So they are called the frames and racks. So heads and or tails of lean white fish, uh, the high gelatin concentration in the heads contributes to the flavor and body of the stock. Okay. Always remember that the water should be cold to start with stock preparation because ingredients placed in cold water will transfer their flavors more efficiently to the liquid. So if hot water is used, the stock will be less flavorful and less clear. Okay. Next, the shellfish stocks. So shellfish stocks are usually made from shrimp, lobster, mussels, or clams. Okay, next we have the vegetable stocks. So vegetable stocks have the advantages over other kinds of stocks in that they are less expensive, less messy, and less time consuming than their meat, poultry, or fish counterparts are. So vegetables that uh, lend themselves well to making stock include carrots, onions, leeks, shallots, garlic, celery, celery, uh, parsnips, fennel, and tomatoes. Okay, so for our last lesson, which is lesson 6, sauces, uh, at the end of this chapter, the student must be able to first identify the important functions of sauces, second, note the different types of sauces and how to prepare them, third, identify important ingredients and making sauces. Okay. So starches and sauces as a complex carbohydrate, starch provides energy and a well-balanced diet derives at least 55 to 65 percent of its calories from carbohydrates. So, so the food industry makes widespread use of the thickening capability of starches as well, of, uh, as well of their abilities to act as a stabilizer, texturizers, water or fat binders fat substitutes, and emulsification aids. So starches contributes to the texture taste and a appearance of foods such as sauces, gravies, cream soups, Chinese dishes, salad dressings, and desserts including cream pies, fruit pies, puddings, and tapioca. So under uh, starches as thickeners, we have the sources of starch. 
So the word starch is derived from the Germanic root word meaning stiff and commercial starch lives up to the original meaning by acting as a thickening or gelling agent in food preparation. So some starches derived from plants can be considered food additives and are used in a wide variety of ways. The source of a starch is important when preparing foods because they vary in flavor and viscosity. So first we have corn starch. The wet milling process is used to derive starch from corn, which is the major source of starch in the United States. Okay, next we have the arrowroot. It is obtained from several tropical plants such as maranta, arundinasia, or tapioca from cassava. So it has the same thickening ability as cornstarch, but it provo uh, produces a cleared, finished product with more neutral taste. Okay, next we have the waxy maize. So used for sauces that need to be frozen because we, uh, waxy maize does not lose its thickening ability when frozen. Okay, next we have the instant starches. A pre-gelatinized or pre-cooked modified waxy maize food starch which thickens instantly when mixed with cold water or fruit juice. It can be used for binding and thickening. It is commonly used in baking than uh, sauce making. So instant uh, starches, we have um, the gulaman powder, okay, the gelatin powder. That is an example of an instant starches. Okay, next. We have breadcrumbs. So cooked wet can be pulverized to thicken sauce or soups. Okay, so starch in food products. So, so starch serves several purposes in the food industry. It includes uh, as a thickened agent, edible film, and sweetener sauce or dextrose and syrup. So the thickening agent. Okay, as a thickening agent, starch as a thickening agent. So starch main used in processed foods as a thickening or uh, gelling agent. Foods that are frequently thickened with starch, it includes soups, sauces, pie fillings, gravies. Okay, so <clears throat> the starch characteristics. 